I feel a bit confused with who I am. Um, I feel quite a bit of fear that I don't know who I am. And I also feel this distance. I don't know, it's superficial, I don't know, but I feel quite distant from from how truly I feel on, yep. a, on a minute to minute basis. Yep. And there's fear, like there's a lot of cloud of fear of even acknowledging that. Can I put to you that you will not know truly who you are until you become at one with God? So the, the reality is that the majority of us have no idea who we are. The difference is that some of us are now becoming more conscious that we have no idea of who we are, whereas the other people believe they do know who they are, and it's that person that they created. <laughs> and there's a big difference between those two states. I feel that if you're having feelings that you don't know who you are, then that is a better place to be than it is to believe you know who you are when it's not who you are. Right? However, I understand the psychological battle that goes on inside of a person not knowing who they are. It's quite difficult. But it's just an emotion. And I'll, I'll say those words to you a lot today. It's just an emotion. You see, for the majority of us, we forget that these things are just an emotion. And instead, what we finish up doing is we start viewing the emotion as the definite unalterable truth but also we don't see it as an emotion we see it as concrete we see it as something that's unchangeable whereas an emotion can just flow out of us so every emotion you face can flow if you believe it's just an emotion if you believe it's something different then it's not going to flow as well Natalie AJ, I'm just wondering, I've discovered from my childhood that I've taken on a lot of beliefs that I believe are true and they're actually error. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that they're not a causal emotion, it's just a belief that I hold on to. Correct. Does this define part of my facade self because I'm holding on to these beliefs? Always. Okay. It's your beliefs that you have embraced for different reasons. Some of them are based around your parents' beliefs, but others are based as a subsequent result of the damage the parents did or the subsequent result of the environmental damage that happened to you or the results of your own choices that you made throughout your life that damaged yourself, they all construct your belief systems. And then your belief systems are used as the basis to make further decisions. Now, if the belief system is in error, in other words, when I say in error, I'm saying in, not in harmony with God's truth, not our own. So if our belief system's not in harmony with God's truth, then it will always create further pain. The irony is we're afraid of pain, but we're constantly creating it because we're in the facade that was created by a heap of belief systems that we do not want to release from ourselves. We want to stay away from. And it's our belief systems that need to be deconstructed in order to get through this facade. And the only thing that can deconstruct belief systems is truth, God's truth. God's truth about this situation, but also God's truth about ourselves. What is God's truth about ourselves? What is God's truth about the damaged self? What actually did happen to the damaged self? What were the actual events that caused me to be damaged? They are all part of God's truth. When God's looking at us, God sees all of that. God sees the, all of the different things that have happened in the ebb and flow of our lives, and God can see it all in terms of what its cause was and what the effect was and then how we, that effect created a belief and then because of that belief we then caused another series of events as a result of those beliefs and God sees all of that. We don't. We're often just living in the addiction of the belief. That's all. Sometimes I find the best question to ask when I'm praying to God is why do I believe this? Yeah, why myself? do I believe this? And, and is, it, is it even true? Yeah. You know, quite often I hear people, they come to me with, you know, statements and I'm going, I'm sorry, but 
that's not even true. Like in that circumstance, that wasn't even true. So, so you're believing something that's not true. You're processing emotion relating to the belief that's not true. Are you actually releasing a causal emotion? Are you actually releasing anything from the damaged self? No. Because to release things from the damaged self, you have to process things that are actually true, things that actually happened to you, yeah. things that, you know, that were damaging that actually occurred. So you can't sit down and cry about how badly you were treated as a child when you weren't treated badly as a child and expect to get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Rita, thanks. <laughs>